Hi everyone, welcome to Harsha Trainings. Myself, I am Harsha. I am a Pega trainer at Harsha Trainings. And today onwards, we are going to uh, look at different interview questions that you regularly face in your interviews. And we are going to get a clear idea and understanding about how to respond to give the answers for those questions. And these videos are definitely going to help you if you are a Pega aspirant to get into Pega job or you are looking for a switch from one company to another company and these videos are really going to help you 100% to become a successful Pega developer. Okay, and here we are going to start our uh, first video with starting from activities. So these uh, videos are going to cover basic questions to advance a lot of questions and any questions related to any topic or any rule type if you are not able to cover you can just go ahead and draft your question and post it in the comment section of the video so that we will be giving you the best solution for your question with clear-cut explanation and if you are a new user to our youtube channel right away click on subscription button and subscribe and also click on bell icon to get notification about further interview session videos today's interview session is going to be on the topic of activities and this video itself is not going to be end of activities there are so many questions that we need to cover on activity activities itself we may make so many videos and once activities topic is done we will go with other topics meanwhile in between the questions that you are going to post in the comment section of the video we are going to answer in 24 hours within 24 hours itself you are going to receive a response from us about the questions that you are going to post in our youtube videos under the comment section and further those questions also will be taken forward added into the respective role category and that will be explained with a clear cut answer and response and hope you are enjoying watching the Harsha trainings youtube channel and let's get on to the topic now and today we are going to discuss about interview questions related to activities and here the very basic question what is activity and what is its purpose so what is an activity and what is the purpose of an activity See the answer for this question is going to be like activity is a rule using which we can implement business logic. See if you want to implement business logic in any of the uh, other applications where you have to write coding. But while you are working with PRPC there is no need to write any code. PRPC has a provision of implementing the business logic by using an activity where you can go ahead and use different methods like what you see here. And this activity is the purpose of implementing business logic. See, Pega comes up with so many OOTB activities. So, if you go to PRPC environment, there, there are so many OOTB activities available. These OOTB activities, each of the activity has its own purpose of utilization in implementing the business requirement. So, activity is ultimately going to be useful whenever you want to implement a business logic. That is the purpose of activity. Then how do you implement business logic? We implement the business logic by utilizing the predefined methods so one should be aware of these methods and when you know what is the purpose of each of the method and you use the method and pass the parameters to it it is done you don't need to write even a single line of code so simply activity is a business logic rule using which we can implement business logic by using its predefined methods added into the steps so that is the answer for the first question and now let's go to the next question what are different types of activities so in the, this is a very common question they are going to ask you about different types of activities. If you go to any activity and in the activity, you can see here, there is a security tab. In the security tab, if you scroll down here at the bottom, you can see activity type. See, there are different types of activities available. Activity type activity, act, activity type on change, activity type route, rule connect, trigger, utility, load data page, asynchronous, assign. Like this, there are so many activity types. Most frequently used activity types are activity type activity activity type on change route trigger utility even load data page these are most widely being used activity types see what does an activity type tell tell you see if i am going to choose an activity type activity this activity can be invoked see activities will not be used independently while implementing the business requirements if you are going to create an activity you would be calling the activity from some other rule so activity type activity means activity can be called from another activity activity can be called from another activity or maybe from html html when i say it can be section on click of a button on event of any on click on event of any control or you may call it from a flow action either in the pre-processing or post-processing like that so activity type 
identifies where we can invoke this activity from. If activity type is activity, it can be called from another activity or flow action or any HTML uh, control. And if the activity type is utility, if I select the activity type to be utility, this activity can only be invoked from another uh, from a flow by using utility shape. If you go to flow, process tab, flow, and here you go, you open any flow, and here in a flow, you have utility, utility flow shape. You have utility flow shape. Just hold on. So using this utility flow shape, we can call an activity. If you double click on utility flow shape, so here you go. If you go to the properties of this flow shape, if you go to the properties of this flow shape, utility shape, so here you can call any activity which is of type utility. So this, util this activity type utility can only be called. Okay, other than utility activity, we cannot call anything here. So just let me backspace this and click the down arrow. And you see here now, so the activity type should be utility. Only activity types of utility will be coming under the drop down when you are trying to call, a, call an activity from a flow by using utility shape. So like this, an activity of type utility can be called from utility shape and activity type activity can be called from another activity and flow action and activity type route. This can be called an assignment shape. If you go to assignment shape, in assignment shape properties, you have routing options. If you choose custom option and then choose two work list or two work basket, then you will see activity type route can be called from there. So like this activity type identifies where we can call this activity from. If activity type is activity, utility, route, activity type, even you have load data page and you have assign and you have rule connect to call from integration shape like this. There are different types of activities provided and coming to this one. Next question. In the next question, what is the difference between activity type activity and utility? So you can see here activity type activity and utility. So what is the difference between activity type activity and utility? What is the difference? See, activity type as I told you already it identifies where we can call it from. It is not only that point. There is a difference. Specific meaning is there. If activity type is activity, then that activity can be used in the front end processing. Front end processing in the sense, suppose for example, I have an activity. In the activity, I, I am using a uh, method called show harness or I am calling an activity show harness, show HTML or I am using uh, let's say for example, uh, like uh, show XML or uh, show page like this. If I am using this method, these methods try to display some HTML form during the execution. Using these methods is a load. So front end methods like show harness, show HTML and show, um, show page, these methods is a load only in the activity type activity. Activity type utility is considered to be background processing. It is works in the background. If you try to use show page method in utility activity, it will fail. It will not allow. So let me show you that. Just have a look at here once. So here I am going to choose activity type utility and steps tab and here you go now. Here I am defining a page, page 1 and here some class, it can be any class of your wish, that's up to you and here you go, show page, page new, just simply for our better understanding, page new, page 1 and here you go show page i'm using show page show page page one and the activity type is utility so i'll try to save this so it is throwing error message you can see this is not allowed this method you cannot use utility activity cannot display html utility activity cannot display html this is not only this method front end methods you cannot use in utility type activity that's how 
activity type is not simply meant for calling from another place and it is also plays a key role in utilizing the methods you cannot use any front end html methods in utility type look at here if i'm going to change the activity type from utility to activity and then now i try to save it is saved successfully a warning you can ignore that's not a big deal so like this an activity type not only for uh, making sure to call from some other rule it is also has certain limitations utility activity in utility activity we cannot use any uh, options like uh, any methods like front end methods like show page or show html like this and activity type activity allows all this that is the difference between activity type activity and utility and let's go with the next question see here what are the maximum records that an obj browse method can fetch see this question we need to understand clearly see the question is what are the maximum records that an obj browse can fetch usually many people say that <coughs> obj browse can fetch only 10000 records actually that is okay the answer will be acceptable in interview but that is not the reality reality is different obj browse method can fetch even millions of records it doesn't depend on prpc it depends always on database see you take any database if you are going to run a query on database how many maximum number of records that the database can give you as many number as per the limitation of the database what does the prpc do when you use obj browse method it will prepare a query it will send the query to the database i have prepared a query select star from so and so select star from table 1 table 1 has 50000 records now prpc's task is preparing query and sending query to the table so when when this query hits the database database may re return all 50000 records that is possible because for a database there is no limitation on a rule base you may have limitation even this is the same for obj browse even external database also database even may return 50000 records right but the limitation is there with obj browse method to fetch the records only when in case of clipboard size when you consider clipboard clipboard can hold only 10000 px results 10000 pages in a page list not more than that so obj browse the query will return 50000 but at the time of taking prpc will take only top 10000 and he is going to place it on clipboard because prpc clipboard has a limitation of holding only 10000 um, a number of pa pages in a page list so the question itself is wrong why why but why still people are asking this question because this is the one everyone reading everyone in this pega world is reading the same everyone reads what are the maximum records that obj browse can browse if you are going to say this type of answer no one will agree because they should have knowledge about it right so what are the maximum number of that an obj browse can return instead of that what are the maximum number of records that can be retrieved on to clipboard that a clipboard holds when you use obj browse that should be the question so obj browse prepares the query and sends it to the database database can return even 50000 but prpc prevents to take the 50000 it is going to take only top 10000 records that is because that is the limitation of the clipboard to clipboard can hold only a maximum of 10000 pages in a page list so that's the reason obj browse has limitation of 10000 okay and let's go with the next question see in order to invoke an activity from another activity we use call branch queue how to invoke an activity from another activity that is not listed here if i want to invoke an activity from another activity pega provides three different instructions remember this these are not methods these are instructions three different instructions called call branch queue most widely being used to ask a question what is the difference between call branch and queue they may ask you what is the difference between call branch or what is the difference between call and queue anything they may ask you the difference between call branch and queue here you go let me minimize this little bit see here see here see difference between call branch queue call is call branch queue these three are for the same purpose of invoking one activity from another activity let's say two activities one child and another one parent if you want to invoke child activity from parent activity you may either use call or you may use branch or you may use queue technically the execution wise there are differences see whenever you are using call call invokes child activity and when child activity execution completes control will come back to parent activity 
further steps that you write in the parent activity after the call step will get executed but in case of branch in case of branch the child act parent activity invokes the child activity and after child activity execution is completed control will come back to child activity where parent activity ignores execution of the steps that are written after the branch step so in case of call branch in both cases parent activity is going to wait till the child activity gets completed once the execution of child activity gets finished control will come back to parent activity whereas the steps that are written after the call step will be executed and the steps that are written after the branch step will be ignored and q q is something where parent activity invokes child activity but parent activity do not wait for the child to get completed parent activity will proceed on its way and child activity is going to proceed on its way this type of processing is called as asynchronous processing whereas call branch these two behavior of processing is called as synchronous processing parent activity will wait for the child activity to get completed in case of call branch so this is synchronous processing in case of queue parent activity do not wait for the child activity to be finished it invokes child activity and it proceeds on its way further execution so that is called as asynchronous processing so call branch both are synchronous whereas queue is asynchronous processing remember one thing queue is never going to be parallel processing in a transaction model i'm talking about so if it is non transactional i don't want to much discuss about this but in a transaction model you can never say queue is parallel queue is always asynchronous processing in a transaction model with respect to the work object locking i am saying okay so that's how call branch these are synchronous whereas queue is asynchronous processing where parent do not wait for the child to be finished and the next question is related to parameters how do i pass parameters from one rule to another rule look at here so if in an activity just generally i am telling with activities see in an activity you can call another activity by using either call or branch argue at the time of calling a rule from another rule there is one option pass current parameter page if you select this option it is going to pass the parameter page of parent rule to child rule so there is one condition if you want if you are expecting the values of the parent rule to be given to child rule parameters the parameter names and types on both rules must be matching okay if you want to pass parameters from one rule to another rule the entire parameter page then the option is pass current parameter page where the parent activity and child activity should have the same parameter names and types being matched so that is about pass current parameter page so that is about uh, the six questions we have covered in this video and in the next video we are going to cover the remaining questions it is not the only questions that we have in the document here i request you guys if you are having any other questions any scenario based questions also that you face in interview that you feel it is difficult just post a comment in the in this video definitely we are going to explain you in detail about that giving you a proper solution that you can understand in a better way guys i hope you are enjoying watching pega videos in harsha trainings channel if you really like our videos and the content that we have please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel to get the notifications and all and please click the bell icon after you subscribe so now let's go to a challenging question in this video though it's i am saying it is challenging it depends on your knowledge again there is one validation rule called validate that is rule obj validate rule obj validate is a server side validation but i have a requirement where i want to run rule obj validate on client side itself so how do i make rule obj validate executed on client side so post your answer for this question in the comment section of this video and we are going to start a new batch on pega training upcoming batch will be on uh, we have a demo this month and 30th you can join the demo session timings will be morning 7 am ist to 8 am ist this will be most suitable time for usa resources and for even for other countries and the batch will commence soon we are going to announce that okay thank you for watching your harsha signing off